Shuffle Squad, welcome back to a brand new video, and today I'm going to be showing off one of my favorite new single price decks to come out of Lost Origin, and that is going to be the brand new Hisuian Arcanine. Now, Hisuian Arcanine has a, an attack that can let it attack for free. Basically, if you have zero cards in your hand, you can do the attack, and you can do 160 damage for free if you have zero cards. And of course, we can combine that with cards like Peony, Galarian Meowth, Ultra Ball, Quick Ball, Grant, Ball Guy. A lot of ways to get our hand down to zero. We do play the Zork package in the deck, allowing us to use extra attackers like Mydiana and even the brand new Hisuian Zork, which I will talk about later on. Now, before we do get in the video, if you are all new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below. What is your favorite deck so far to come out of Lost Origin? Um, and uh, also, while you're down there, you can also go check out the Pokex Word Puzzle. There are new puzzles coming out this week, so definitely don't want to miss out on those. You can go do those puzzles. If you like those brain exercises, definitely go check out the new Pokex Word Puzzles. And and of course, you can also check out Atlas down below. If you pick up anything from Atlas, you make sure you use the discount code TSS12 to get yourself a 12% discount on your purchase, which is a pretty good discount. 12%, that's that's a lot to save. So definitely don't want to miss out on that. Anyways, let's go scope out the deck list. This is the Arcanine list that I am working with here, and I like it a lot. Arcanine is very similar to Gramble, of course, from Lost Thunder. And Arcanine is a funny Pokemon. So right off the bat, you already have a good fighting attacker. If you end up getting paired versus Arceus V-Star, you have a nice big attacker that can take out Arceus. Arcanine attack does do 160 damage for zero energy if you have no cards in your hand. It's easy to get your hand down to zero when combined with cards like Glaring Meowth, Ultra Ball, Quick Ball, and even Peony, Grant, and Ball Guy. This deck is all about getting your hand down to 0 for Hisuian Arcanine. Now, Arcanine doesn't do all the heavy lifting. We do have the addition of Zork in the deck. Zork can transform into Arcanine, but also lets you play a couple extra attackers to help you in different matchups. So the three attackers I'm playing alongside Arcanine is Flapple. Flapple can be good with Acidic Mucus. I am playing a four copies of Capture Energy in the deck, so we can try to do Acidic Mucus to take knockouts on decks with a lot of abilities in play. We can punish decks that do end up playing a lot of abilities, something like Turbo decks with Mew and Greninja and Crobat and the Barrel decks. There's all kinds of decks out there where Flapple can shine. Um, and also, I got Mightyena. This deck struggles a lot against Mew. Arcanine doesn't do a lot of damage against Mew because it, it does have resistance to fighting. So Mightyena is here to just KO Mew VMAX. Wild Tackle just KOs Mew, of course, and it can attack for free when there's a Mew VMAX in place. So Mightyena is kind of our answer to Mew VMAX. And I am playing Hisuian Zork. Now, I am experimenting with this card, but it's a logically decent card. Now, there's quite a few decks out there where being able to use Doom Curse can be very beneficial. So for no energy, at the end of your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon will be knocked out. This is very, very useful against decks like Duraludon, Stonejourner, and Gudra, to name a few. Any matchup where the opponent has like one or two Pokemon in play and they don't, you know their deck doesn't have a lot of switch. Like Duraludon doesn't have a lot of switch. Gudra, not a lot of switch. You can just Zoark them and if they don't retreat, they're going to get KO'd. And when they do retreat, sometimes them retreating can punish them. Like, Duraludon doesn't want to retreat and give up all the energy on a Duraludon, right? So that's why the Zora can be very annoying. It's also good against the Gudra, because also Gudra doesn't want to retreat a lot of the time. So you force your opponent into some really awkward spots with Hisuian Zork, and that's why we are playing it here for those matchups where the opponent doesn't use a whole lot of Pokemon. It's a really smart addition to the deck, and I really, really like it a lot. Um, I am playing a Guru for the extra Primate Wisdom recovery, which can be good. I've thought about playing a Bibarel and Altaria. have seen some list playing Babylon Altaria, but I don't think you need it. The, one of the more important cards in the deck, however, is Radiant Venusaur. Now, when you put your hand to zero, right, you can't do much next turn, but with Radiant Venusaur, at the end of your turn, you can draw cards until you have four in your hand. So you can use Radiant Venusaur's ability after you put your hand to zero and attack with Arcanine to draw four new cards, meaning that for your next turn, you can set up again because you got four extra cards to work with. And that's why the Venusaur is so good. And again, I've seen some lists utilize Altaria, the Barrel, there's a lot of ways to play it, and this is the first kind of early draft of the list that I am enjoying the most, but I definitely want to experiment with the Altaria list and the Bibera list, um, but I am kind of enjoying it, this more simplistic, straightforward version. Uh, Rose Tower is really good. You do have to play stadiums in here, and that's because Radiant Venusaur does get shut off by Path of the Peak, which is a problem, so I am playing some Rose Towers to help us against Path of the Peak, and it's also, like, it's basically an extra helpful, like, card to help us draw cards when we put our hand to zero for the following turn, so that's why Rose Tower is, like, the perfect supporter to play. Grant is really good, too. Grant, you can um, have in your discard pile. You can put it in your hand, but you have to discard two cards to put it back in your hand from your discard, and that can help you. Grant can let you do 30 with Arcanine, extra, 30 extra damage with Arcanine, and it lets you discard cards from your hand so it's like an extra way to put cards in discard pile for arcanine and that's why the grant is so useful 
And uh, that's my Arcanine list I'm rocking with. I'm enjoying the list a lot. Still some experimentation to be done with Altari and Bibero potentially, but early on I'm liking the deck a lot. And I think Arcanine has a lot of potential as a really good single price deck. So let's go show it off and see in action. All right, going second with an okay hand, we have some things we can do. Hopefully we don't prize our Radiant Venusaur though. Because we don't have a Peony to find Heavy Ball, which is a problem. We'll see though. What are we up against? Ice Rider? Looks like it is Ice Rider. All right, Ice Rider we can very easily beat. It is annoying they're going first, though. Um, I think I have to go for the Growlithe this turn. Yeah, because they can just Melanie and attack and attach. All right. Uh, level Ball. See what we got going on in the deck here. Venusaur's in there. Growlithe. Mighty Anna. Flapple. Flapple's prize. Mighty Anna's in the deck, which is good. So let's grab Growlithe. Because why not? Capture G. Grab Zarua. I'm going to Ultra Ball for Radiant Venusaur here, too. Get rid of these two. Grab the Radiant Venusaur now. Try to draw some extra cards for next turn. Net the Meowth. Do I really want to bench Meowth in this matchup? I kind of have to. And we're going to Defensive Posture. And we're going to Flip Edge, giving us a free turn of immunity. Nice. And we can draw three cards with Venusaur. It's not bad. I can play the Rod next turn. I can't play the Rod. I well, no, I can't play Rod. I can Meowth here. And then play Rod, which is good. So we can... Yeah, we'll do that then, I guess. We'll see what we're playing against and how it all goes. Because this could be Ice Rider Palkia. Or it just could be straight Ice Rider. We'll have to find out. Uh, but yeah, if they are just going to keep calling. Nice. So that free turn did save us. Now, I do have a boss here, which I can play on Ice Rider. Depending on what we draw, I might go for it. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going for it. So we have to go... Grab Arcanine. And the sequence is right. So we evolve. We're going to have to lose the Rod, it looks like. That's fine. Yeah, we'll have to lose Rod Zoark. That's fine. It's not a big deal. The amount of momentum we have, it shouldn't matter. Plus, we get the first attack on them, which is huge. I guess I could have got rid of the Choice Bell. They didn't actually need the Choice Bell, so I could have put the Zoark down. Misplay on my end. We didn't get a Supporter, but I did get another Zoark, though, so that's good. And we got Guru, which is cool, too. We got Ultra Ball, which is nice. And you find Peony. They're actually just going to switch. They're going to hide behind Sobble again. No, they're going to... Oh, oh, I see. They're Melanie. Okay, I was like, what? <laughs> All right, that's fine. There's a bucket. All right, they do have the KO here, but I've already got the hit on them, so they're dead. And if they don't get another uh, Ice Rider down, they're going to get knocked out. I imagine they have a Drizzle, which they can do for Quick Ball. But yeah, I'm able to KO the Ice Rider here now, which is good. Thanks to the boss we did there and got the first hit on them, which is nice. So we can get the first hit on the Ice Rider here, and we can knock him out. Yeah, I guess I should have got rid of the Choice Bells. I didn't really, we don't really need it in this matchup. So I actually could have kept the Zoark. Or the rod, even. Eh, it didn't really matter. Whatever. I don't need to play properly, bro. Who cares about sequencing? All right. Yeah, they kind of have to get quick ball. They might chain drizzles. They could try to go after my Meowth here with quick shooting, which is fine. Not too concerning. They could get Path to Peak, too, which might be a bit of an issue. If they get Path, I might have to match Guru, depending on what I'm able to draw, though. I may have to go Guru, because I might. I need to find Peony, right, to get Rose Tower. We'll see what they do. There's a quick ball getting played. They do get rid of... What do they get rid of here? Water energy? Maybe. Air balloon. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, they get ice rider. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, they got four cards in hand. They're going to knock me out. Do they chain the drizzles, though? Or are they just going to pass with the knockout? Just if they take a knockout, we can KO them back. It's all gooch. All right, cool. Nice. All right, so I am able to KO them back. I can get another... I can get, like, our Growl or something. We'll see we draw. Ooh, there's the Rose Tower. So we can go Zoark. I can bench Guru, Ultra Ball the hand away, grab a Growl. I think I'm going to do that. Don't really need to play the Rose Tower, obviously. Well, I have more Zorwas than Growl. We'll just grab another Zorwa, I guess. It's fine. And then we'll transform into Arcanine here. Kind of want to find Mighty Anna, too, in case we need to play, like, with Mighty Anna. In this matchup, because there's a there's a chance we can't use our canine, right? You never know. Just in case. Another Rose Tower. Evil Incense, fantastic. Another Growlithe, fantastic prizes. One more card. The only issue of this hand is I have the Rose Tower in hand. Now, I might have to try to put it back in the deck with Guru, because if they ever path me, I need to be ready for that. Or I can just Ball Guy, because I'm probably going to Ball Guy here. I'm going to try to just dig for the Mighty Anna, just get the Mighty Anna set up. And then we can use Mighty Anna instead of our canine, which can be pretty beneficial. There's the Quick Shoot Inteleon. 
Yeah, they're probably going to start going after Meowth. If I can find one of my peonies, though, I can get my other net and I can net the Meowth and heal it, which is ideal. No, they're going to go after Venusaur. That's fine with me. I Venusaur's not getting KO'd by quick shooting anytime soon. I'm kind of surprised they're doing that, to be honest. Wouldn't mind getting Palpat to get boss back, too, to set up the Ice Rider 2 shot. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see. Oh, they're going to boss me this turn. They're actually going to go after my Venusaur, so it looks like they're just going to pierce me. That's fine. I don't have a way to move at the moment. So it's not a bad play for my opponent to make. Because at the moment, I don't have a way to switch Venusaur. My other Choice Belt's gone. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, if we had Choice Belt, I could have, if I was able to move, I could have Grant KO'd the Ice Rider, but we don't have that. All right. It's fine. We'll leave a Wincense for... I have Rope and Ned in the deck. I have to find Peony. I'm going to have to play the Rose Tower here. I don't want to waste it, but I think we have to. Because I do need to get this switch here. Didn't get the Peony. I got Primate Wisdom to the rescue, maybe? Nope. Rip. Fine, we'll shuffle the deck. And draw two cards. Aw, bro, so close, so close. Dang it, how are you going to troll me like that? Damn, that sucks. All right, whatever, that's fine. We got Mighty Ann in the discard pile, so we got that going for us. See if they get a knockout here. They have to probably like Melon. Well, they could have multiple drizzles, I guess. They don't have a Shade Dealers and Talion to work with. So they have to maybe go like Melon. They could play the Rose Tower, though. Which could be a problem. It looks like our Venusaur is going to go down. I'm unable to find Rod, right? Well, Rod's in. I'm going to find Peony, right? So I, I'm not going to get the Venusaur back at the moment. I, if the Rose Tower sticks, so I can Peony for Rod plus Quick Ball. And then Rose Tower, and they get the Venusaur back. They have a Research. Oh, boy. It's fine. I mean, I'm still two-shotting the Ice Rider, and they do find the path. So I have no way to use Venusaur. So now we don't even need to worry about getting Venusaur back, because they were able to find the path, and unfortunately, I am out of Rose Towers. It's like, I drew my Rose Towers at the wrong time, so it kind of sucks. It's kind of unfortunate. Still very winnable, though. But now, like, them KO my Venusaur is kind of irrelevant, right? Because they just path me, and I can never play Venusaur again. Now, this is where we need the Mighty Anna, right? This is why I wanted to step the Mighty Anna. This ball guy for Ultra Ball and Quick Ball. You can Ultra Ball away these two. Grab Zoark. And then get rid of the rope, I guess. Grab Zorua. Burn the Heavy Ball. Peony's prized, okay. Very vulnerable. Smack him in the face for 160. We are in top deck mode. I do have Primate Wisdom, though. But all I have to do is just go Mighty Anna and I win, right? I just go Mighty Anna. Now, they might take two prizes here. They should be able to KO both my Arcanine and my Meowth. If they have another quick shooting or if they have a net in the deck. They can KO both Meowth and Arcanine, but that's fine. Oh, they're grabbing Shade Dealings. That won't let them KO the, um, the Meowth, so they're not going to get the double prize this turn, so that's good. That's nice. Get an extra turn. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have grabbed a Zoark, to be honest, because they could boss it. But, like, they have to KO me with Ice Rider this turn, and then either way, I go Arcanine or Zoark. As long as I get a playable card, I can just go Arcanine. So, should be fine. Should be fine. I also have Grant. So, I think we could... No, I can't play the Grant, though, right? I wouldn't be able to play the Grant. I don't know. I don't think I can grant to my hand if I have one card. Ooh, they quick ball away on Marnie. I wonder if they could have Marnied me here. They have to move this turn, right? Because I am going to knock out this Ice Rider. I'm going to win the game if they don't move. They have to move this turn. So we'll see if they do it. I do have Boss still in the deck. Let me find Peony. Let's see what they're doing. They're going after Meowth again. I need to net that. The net is in the deck. I know it's in there. So we can never find Peony. I can try to net the Meowth and heal it. But yeah, they have to they have to retreat this turn or else I am going to win. Unless they're feeling ballsy, but I go Mighty Anna and I win the game. So I'm going to win with Mighty Anna here. I don't need to do Arcanine. So they have to retreat. They got to retreat here. And that does make it tricky for me. Because if I don't get boss, then we're screwed. They're going to Melanie to the Ice Rider. Okay, what's their play? What's their play looking like? 
Nope, they just knock me out, and that's GG's. So yeah, I can either win, potentially, with Arcanine, or I can go Zoark, so... Or I can go Mightyena. Let's see what the tables have in store for us. Okay. Arcanine it is. <laughs> Arcanine it is. We'll win with Arcanine. That works, too. And we'll take the dub versus Ice Rider. Ice Rider is a pretty good matchup. It is good that when every, we went second and we were able to do Growlithe, which did save us from losing. Because we bought that free turn, right? So that's good. That's why the Growlithe is so busted. All right, we are going to be going most likely second here. Yep. We're against potentially Ice Rider, which is pretty beatable. Even though we're going second, which does give us a big disadvantage. Because they get an early prize lead. But I do have the ability to try to use Growlithe here to buy us a turn. Plus, I could have a bad setup. You never know. You know, see what this mulligan gives me here. What do we got off this mulligan? Zorua. All right, not a bad hand. I can go into Growlithe, which I'm going to have to do. Because we want to go Growlithe. Try to get one turn of immunity here, I think. With our ability or our attack. I'm going to probably get Venusaur too. Draw a few extra cards here. Because we don't have a supporter. All right, what are we up against, though? My opponent's got two extra cards, which sucks. Is it Ice, is it Ice Rider? It is Ice Rider. Which means, yes, we do have to go Growlithe. The problem is, though, they could have Boss... So it might not even matter, to be honest, which is kind of the problem. It's going, f They're going first. Like, them getting an early prize really stinks. So unfortunate. I could try to use Hisui and Zork in this matchup. Um, which isn't a bad idea against Ice Rider. Like, Hisui and Zork could be pretty good in this matchup, but not too sure how good it will really be. So let's go do this. Grab Growlithe. Retreat. We'll quick ball away the Arcanine for Venusaur. And I will air balloon this. Sure. And we'll defense a posture. And we flip heads. Nice. That's nice. We can chill out. Draw an extra card with Venusaur, which is a level ball, which is pretty good. Pretty good hand. We can do a few things here. We'll see what my opponent has. Do they have a knockout? On a bench Pokemon. They might KO my Venusaur, though, which is a little sketchy. But I do have Rod, though, so I can just get the Venusaur back, so it's all good. But we'll see if they end up bossing me. We're hoping they don't take a knockout this turn, because I really want... This is why going second can be pretty bad, because you give up an early prize, which really sucks. But, because of Gralos' first attack, we're able to maybe buy ourselves a turn here. No, they got Path of the Peak. That is really bad. I can't play Venusaur now. Gotta find my Rose Towers. This is why I do play two copies of Rose Tower in the deck. Yeah, this is why I do play two rows in the deck for specifically the Path of the Peak lock. They do have an Evolution Incense. Oh, boy. Do they have a boss, though, is the question. Do they have a boss here? They could have a Clogged Up Hand, which I'm hoping they have. They can kill my Venusaur. Not the Rod it back, though. I need to find Peony. I can get Guru down here, which I'm going to do. I'm probably going to go Guru here and try to draw some cards with Primate Wisdom. Or something like that. Okay, they have a Marnie. That's fine. That puts me closer to Peony. That's actually not bad at all. And that also means they're not going to knock out this turn. They do not take a prize. So that's good. All right, what do we got? There's the Peony. And the Rose Tower. Nice. They Marnie me into a pretty good hand. I will happily take it. Not today, Ice Rider. Not today. So let's see what they do here. They can't do much unless they have an escape rope combo or something, which would be kind of frustrating, but we'll see if they have an escape rope. Because if not, they're not doing anything, and then I survive the turn. Because it's really important to get a free turn here. Yeah, I don't think Kasui and Zorak's really good in this matchup. I don't think we need to use it. I'm thinking about it, but it's like, nah. Because it's like, it may, it's awkward for them sometimes. Because then they have to, like, retreat out of it, but they can't. Okay, so it's Evil Wind Sense here. Grab the Arcanine. I guess I could have gotten Flapple or Mightyena, too. Probably was the ideal play. Never. Who cares about misplaying, though? I don't care about misplaying. I think I just want to get two level balls here and just get two more things down. Be ideal. Yeah, I could have I could have sequenced that better. I definitely could have gotten multiple things down. It's all good though. Who needs to sequence correctly? I could have got Flapple in the discard, which might have been okay, or Mighty Anna's good too. Very vulnerable. Hit him hard here for a nice chunk of damage. And we get to draw four new cards, which we got Palpad, Zork, Evil Wind Sense. Okay. We'll see what they do here. They might have another path this turn, which is a little sketchy. Yeah, looking back, I should have put Mighty Anna in the discard pile, actually, with that. That was a, actually a dumb misplay. Because actually I need the Mighty Anna. 
to check the Calyrex. Okay, so I should have went the... I don't know why I didn't even win Sent for my Deanna. I just jumped the gun there. I, I got excited. That Marnie got me excited, but I definitely should have got my Deanna. They are putting quick shooting down, though, which doesn't really phase me too much. I don't think quick shooting really matters too much in this matchup for my opponent. Because I'm not going to bench Meowth. They could boss my Venusaur this turn. Um, as long as I draw a playable card, though, I can just KO... I can just do Arcanine again. This is where the Mighty Anna will be good, though, and I can attack for free. So, we'll see. They do level ball here. We might see them get boss or path this turn. I'm curious to see what they're going to grab here. Well, I'm curious to see if it's going to be boss or path. Probably boss, right? They could get path. Path would be annoying because I don't have a peony. I do have Palpat for peony, though. Evil Incense. Okay, they're not getting any of the above. They could Marnie me again, too. They don't have to play a Melanie this turn, so there's that. They do play Capacious Bucket. They could use Radiant Greninja in this matchup. I don't know if they're playing Palkia, though. I haven't seen a Palkia come down yet, so I'm not too sure. All right, what do they got? They're going to build up the Bench Ice Rider. I guess they could retreat and Melanie to the other Ice Rider. Nope, they're just going to knock out my active. Alrighty, then. It's fine with me. I can KO you in return. All right, cool. All right. Let's see what we draw here. Look at that. <laughs> uh, another Peony. Maybe they're Arcanine's prized. Okay. So let's Evo Wind Sense here. Grab my Deanna now. Not make the same mistake twice. We'll Palpad back Peony. We'll Peony for... Um, Evo and Rod seems pretty good. And I can put back one of the Arcanines. Could also get Grant Quick Ball. But I think I'm just going to another Zork here. So I'm fine with this. And they just concede the match. We will take it. I mean, I, that was a pretty decent little clean dub there. I'm um, kind of showing off the power of um, the... Uh, showing off the power of the Arcanine pretty well. And the Growlithe really helped us there too. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Might be against Arceus Duraludon, which is actually a great matchup, mainly because of the Hisuian Zoark we have. And we're, I might be able to show it off if this is Arc Duraludon. Um, we do have an Arcanine too to work with, which is good. But yeah, we'll see what we're playing against here. It's most likely... Most likely, Arc Duraludon. So if we don't prize our Hisuian Zoark, this matchup should be good. Though no one my luck, we're going to prize the most important piece in this matchup. We'll see, though. All right, what are we up against here? Oh, it's Reggie. I mean, I can beat Reggie. I take the first knockout. It's not too bad. And we did prize the Hisuian Zoark, so I guess it's a good thing it's not, not um, Arc Duraludon. We'll do this. I could grab Venusaur here. Draw like one card with it, which I don't mind. I kind of want to draw some cards here. I have rope in hand, right? So it's not too bad. We'll burn this. Net the Venusaur. I can try to draw, draw an extra card here to help me out. There we go. Look at that. The one card came in clutch. Because I want to get Grant in the discard pile for things. So I was like, eh, maybe we can try like a Peony. We have rope in hand. They can't boss me. If I take the first prize, I should win this game, right? So... That's kind of how this is going to go. Let's see if they can wombo combo me here. Um, they do have Radiant Charizard, so they are playing Thornton. But let's see if they're able to pull off a knockout here on my active. We'll also see if they're playing Path or not. Catcher, that's fine. I got Rope in hand, plus I have Peony if I really needed to get out of this. All right, that's good. Let's see if they get me here. Is there any Auroras in their hand? There is no Aurora, just a Rod and a Gift Energy, which are good discards. The fact they're playing Catcher tells me this is a Pokestop build. So I don't think you'd ever want to play Catcher without Pokestop. So I feel like this is a Pokestop build. We'll see, though. And they have a Bruno for four. Okay. Definitely feeling pretty safe here, I think. Capture and G. Yeah, they could have a Regieleki, but yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I should be able to get the first knockout here, which is all we really need to kind of be in this match. Nice. That was a good draw. An extra basic is always good. I could also get rid of another evolution. There's not really much to get rid of. I really think I just set up more, like, Arcanines and Growlithe and stuff, you know. So let's go Peony here for double. We could Heavy Ball. Is there anything prized? I do have a Zorua prized. Yeah, I can grab Heavy Ball, Level Ball here. So I can try to get more basics down, which is really all we need to do. I would like to get Manaphy, though, and play. It might be relevant for the Regieleki, so I could Level Ball for Manaphy here. Uh, whatever, sure. We already have two evolutions. It's fine. I'll go Manaphy. I do want to make sure that we have access to bench protection so they can't take any extra prizes. Just covering my grounds, you know? 
And Arcanine KOs every Reggie in their deck, which is good. And even the Radiant Charizard dies. Rod is a great prize. I can get back his work and stuff. All right, let's see what Venusaur blesses me up with here. Ooh, not anything great. That's not good. That was a pretty bad Venusaur. Uh-oh, this is where things could go south. I do have Growlithe, though, if I really need to buy time. That Venusaur didn't give me much, though. Unfortunately, it's not great. Let's see if they attack me, though. They still got to find Aurora Energy. They have no Auroras in the discard yet. There's Pokestop. Still no Auroras. I can play the Pokestop, though, too, now, and I can try to get Pokemon Search. So now I feel like we can attack next turn, which is nice. Um, but yeah, let's see if they can attack. They could try to go Regigigas, I guess. They were able to get the Twin Energy in there, so they could reasonably go Regigigas. Speed Energy on Regieleki. What else do they find? They don't get attacked this turn. That'd be pretty good. They don't get attacked. And I draw a playable card. I could actually just play my hand down here and attack. Knock out Reggie Lucky with Boss, which I'll probably do. Or I can kill the Gigas. They do play their Pal Pad. They already did Reggie, though, to Drago. So they don't have anything here, I imagine. Yeah, nice. We get an extra knockout, which is good. Flapple, though. That's not a playable card. Hmm. Could grab Meowth. Meowth gets me there. I guess Meowth will do, I guess. So we can go Rod. Put back Zorua and Zork. And then I can boss the Regieleki. We can actually get around the Gift Energy, which is kind of insane. We can Evolution Roar here. And knock out the Regieleki. And we get around Gift Energy, which is kind of insane. So we'll see what we get off the prizes. Oh, welcome back, Heavy Ball. Glad to see you. But yeah, now I'm feeling pretty good. We already were at two prize lead is insane. So I can afford to give up a turn now, which is nice. Um... And that's all fine and dandy. We did find Zoar Quick Ball. Pretty good hand. We're able to attack next turn. Palpad is pretty good too. I can put back Boss and Peony. They finally got the attack, it looks like. They found the Aurora, but now they have to find the Regieleki here. Um, let's see if they can pull off the Regieleki. Is it prized? Did they prize their other Lucky? If they did, they did. So they are able to attack me, finally. But I am already ahead two prizes, so we'll see how it goes. I have a really good two prize lead on my opponent right now, which is pretty bad for them. There's not much they can do. I mean, real realistically, they have to be playing, like, some kind of crazy build here with, like, some kind of crazy tech card to stop me. I don't think they do have a crazy tech card to stop me. Because, yeah, this is not good for my opponent. But the the Gift Energy will help them chain attacks every turn. I have no doubt in my mind, because of the Gift Energy, they will be able to attack every turn. But the problem is, my opponent will not be able to... Not going to be able to really keep up, I don't think. As long as I'm able to attack every turn, they can't really win this. And that is all I really need to win this game. They could end up bossing my Venusaur at some point. Um, they do play Catcher though, not potentially not boss, but they do play Palpat. So I'm kind of confused on how many things they're gonna be playing. But we'll see what they do. They're actually gonna net the Reggie Drago. They're not gonna attack with Reggie Drago here. Interesting. They're gonna go Steel. The Steel knock me out. Does minus a hundred damage. Um, unless they're bossing me here, Reggie Steel doesn't kill my RK9. Oh, they're going to Thornton. They're going to go Radiant Charizard. Okay, that's fine. All right, I was going to say, what the heck are they going Registeel for? <laughs> it doesn't knock me out. Um, okay, that's fine. I will be able to knock them out here, though, with um, Arcanine. Arcanine does do 160, and Charizard just so happens to have 160 HP. So they're dead either way. It's all gooch. We have both Rose Towers prize. Jeez. Okay. So I, I, I can't play the Palpat, actually. That's fine. No problem. Who needs Palpad? Not me. I don't need Palpad. Nah, we should be fine without the Palpad. Now they have to find the Registeel again, though. They're actually down four Regis right now, which is pretty good. All right, see you later, Charizard. Good thing we do enough damage to kill their Charizard. All right, let's see what we get off the prize here. Rose Tower would be good. There we go. Actually, I don't even know. I don't even know if I want to play Rose Tower down because I actually like the Pokestop being in play. Because if I ever need to, I can Pokestop to try to dig for like balls and stuff, right? Because I still have a lot of Pokemon. Like, yeah, no, it's a good idea to maybe save the uh, Pokestop. But I don't know. I like having it in play. Okay, what do we got off this? Nice. Another Peony, another Zerua. Pretty good draws. Um, I don't see how we can lose, man. It's just, it's not looking good for my opponent. I mean, they have to KO my, my Venusaur, but even then, I have Peony. Um, so at worst, I could just go Rod plus Rose Tower. I can Rose Tower, play the Rod, and get a quick ball off Peony and just guarantee the, the Venusaur again. But even if they KO Venusaur, I still have Meowth cooking, right? So I can still be able to, like, use Meowth to, like, try to, like, keep chaining attacks every turn. They play Avery. Okay, that would be a bit of an issue. 
Um, not even, no, not even. I can just rod. Avery's not even a problem. I just go get rid of Mana Fee Meowth, rod them back. Not even Avery would be a problem. Not even Avery would be much of a problem. So it's not even, not even a problem. We'll see what they do this turn. They do have the attack. They were able to find the Raji Steel. Uh, but will they be able to keep constantly attacking me is the question. They're putting Gift Energy on to Raji Steel. They're going to Bruno. It's fine with me. Registeel is not great here. Oh, there's the catcher. They're going for it. They're gung ho in it. They do flip heads. They go after Manaphy, though. All right, that's fine. We're so far ahead now. I don't even care if Manaphy gets KO'd. I can also net the Meowth to, like, reset damage, right? I'm not even worried about it. Now I can rod Manaphy back. I can rod Manaphy back, get back. We'll see. Miss is fine. I don't really care. They did knock out the Venusaur, which is huge. We have two more Arcanines now. I don't really have to rod back as Orc anymore, though. Now I have three attackers in play. So I'm not even worried. All right, what do we draw? My Diana's good. All right, let's just do this. Rod's in there, right? Yep. Peeny. Rod level ball. We can put back just the mana fee. I can put back Zork too, I guess. Just more outs to Zork, I guess, is more important, actually. Just in case we ever need it, right? You never know. Grab the mana fee. Just for insurance. Just for insurance. And very vulnerable for the KO. Knock out the Drago. He's got to take two more tries. So I just got to find Zork and attack with the other Arcanine. And we got him. There's Sasuian Zork. Not great in this matchup, though. We're not against Gudra or Duraludon or, yeah, any of those matchups. Oh, that's a lot of ball guys. Ball guy is good too. It does does card cards. We have Meowth too. So like I'm feeling good about this spot. Like it's pretty hard for my opponent to win. And that's the beautiful thing about our canine. Because like the worst thing they could have done in this matchup is obviously probably use the Radiant Charizard, which does Ooh, they lose a Marnie. I guess Marnie could be a little disruptive. They do have that Radiant Charizard, which is a pretty bulky Pokemon, but because our canine just does 160 damage, we don't even have to worry about the Radiant Charizard either. So yeah, we're just gonna kinda hopefully walk away with a dub here. There's the scoop. Yeah, they see the right on the wall. They realize it's nothing they can really do. There you have it. That is the Arcanine deck in action with those matches there. Doing a good job showing off what this deck is all about. And there are definitely other ways to play the deck. I've seen people play with Barrel, and of course, Altaria doesn't seem like a bad inclusion either. So if you want to kind of go down that route, you can. Um, but I do like the deck a lot. The deck is a lot of fun to play. It's very fun to kind of play these kind of get your hand down to zero decks. I've always been a fan of like Gramble and stuff. So it's awesome to see that the archetype is back in standard. And I really enjoyed playing this deck a lot. So yeah, if y'all enjoyed today's video on the Shovel Squad, make sure to leave a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss any of our lovely content creators daily uploads and all that good stuff. Um, that'll be it for me. Check out all the sponsors down below and everything, and I will catch you on another video. Bye-bye. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com, and at the checkout screen, make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. Poka X Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokaxword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community, and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. 
we have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing. Except, expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the, the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and The Shuffle Squad. See you there. The Shuffle Squad is an organization focused on bringing light to the Pokemon community. We love everything that there is to do with Pokemon, and we hope that you do too. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, following us, and commenting on this video to let us know what you'd like to see in the next video on the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video in its entirety, and we hope to see you next time.